Welcome to the Virginia is for Laughers podcast brought to you by X2 Comedy. If you're looking to get more out of your Shenandoah Valley experience, then this is the podcast for you. You'll meet interesting people, the comedians that perform here, and find out more about what you can do and see. Whether you live here or plan to visit, listen to explore what helps make up our unique slice of heaven. Now here's your host, Dawn Davis Walmack. Hello, laughers. I'm so happy to introduce you to Melissa from Grateful Goods, offering you refills plus sustainable goods and a colorful, conscious shop at the Agora Market in downtown Harrisonburg. They sell sustainable products that are mainly biodegradable, compostable, reusable, or refillable at a place where you can reuse the same container and refill it. In their shop, you can also find home decor, zero waste cleaning products, personal care, sustainable kitchen items, mason jar accessories series and more. Their apothecary section carries natural bath and body products made locally and throughout the U.S. In addition, they have carrier oils available for sale by the ounce for your next essential oil DIY and items like loose herbs and Epsom salt available in bulk too. Welcome to the show, Melissa. It's great to have you on today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited for this. I am too. I have had just so much fun meeting on Zoom for the very first time before we press record. And I just know this is going to be delightful and fun for all the laughers. I just can't wait to get into this. So thank you again for being on today. So fun. And we haven't even started. So <laughs> I do want to start. I do want to start with this question. I saw on your website, your store is labeled a sustainable lifestyle shop. What does that mean to you and what is your mission? So um, in my view, I guess, and Faith, my business partner, a sustainable lifestyle shop is a place that you can shop for practical goods that you would purchase in plastic, but instead as an item that could be composted or just reused and rewashed over and over again, um, just kind of the maybe the definition of sustainable, I guess, you know, just like something that you don't, you're not buying trash. Basically. Um, we even have trash bag liners, if that kind of is a good example. So instead of, you know, buying trash bags that you're going to toss anyway, you would have this liner that you dump directly into your larger bin. So just like we have, uh, you know, a lot of swaps like that, things that replace plastic. Oh, see, I knew already you were going to say things early on that was going to make me go, what? So, <laughs> okay. So do you need to save the reusable toilet paper for later? Because I could talk about that too. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna get into that. But, but I got a little ADD, so <laughs> I got to stay on track with this first thought in my head, which is, this, <laughs> I got to go back to this trash liner. You mean like the big trash can we put out on the curb? There's like a no, big... No, just your like oh. kitchen, your kitchen okay. or bathroom trash can. We yes. have liners, the small ones and large ones. And the liner goes into your trash can instead of a plastic bag. I actually didn't even know about these until Faith came along. I had no idea it was a thing. And it's really cool. And I can't wait to run out of trash bags because <laughs> I want to try it. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've am i never used them either. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it because I, yeah, I have I, four kids. So I don't know how it's going to go, but it's worth a try. Anything's worth a try, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Anything is worth a try. You're your business partner, Faith, in you. Are, this is this business started what last September, September twenty. So August fourteenth was our grand opening, um, but we became business partners uh, September. We have it written down seventeenth. Okay, so this <laughs> yeah. is a brand new business. So how did you two meet and decide to go into business together? <laughs> so Faith and uh, Faith moved here in two thousand nineteen um, from Austin, Texas. And correct me if I'm wrong, Faith, you've moved here in the summer, yes. but we met in August. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, Faith is here <laughs> in, the, in the background. Um, so she moved here during the summer. And then in August was one of the first PTA meetings at the, our children's school. And I was um, talking about sustainability <laughs> and Surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, I, I think at one point I was like trying to get them to stop using styrofoam cups. And I noticed Faith's water bottle sitting across the room too had like stickers that were similar to my water bottle. And I was like, oh, but she's actually the one she came over to me after the meeting and just kind of like, I'm pretty sure you just sat and like looked at me. <laughs> she did just kind of like, like, 
Hey. <laughs> like, uh, oh yeah, she said like, everything you're saying. I'm I agree with. <laughs> so, mind melding. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, we became friends then. And then she was new here when we're going into a pandemic. So our fam- family spent a lot of time together. And um, yeah, we're just very like minded. Faith actually attended my birth last year. I had a baby in February and she was there. Congratulations. So she knows the best and worst of me. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> accused to be my business partner <laughs> is pretty impressive. <laughs> I would say, yes. That's, and also yeah. a really great friend to be there for you that way, I would say. Yeah, for the laughers out there listening to this podcast, just to give you some context, they're at the Agora Market at their shop (laughs) right now. Melissa (laughs) is in their inventory closet and Faith is out on the floor attending to customers. And that's why they're kind of, you know, not shouting, but like kind of talking to each other, what seems like a distance a bit. So that's a little visual for you. So you're kind (laughs) of, in with us on this episode we love to include you so thank you for sharing that i like what you guys are doing because our choices do have a great impact on the amount of waste humans produce especially with the single use plastics can you share with us some simple choices we can make that might be surprising to most people that can really help with this So um, I think everybody has a different priority maybe as to what they can or are able to swap out. But for I can speak for myself, um, plastic bags were the first thing to refuse. Um, You go to the grocery store and they're like double bagging (laughs) all these bags. So getting a reusable bag was probably one of my very first um, swaps. And the easiest one, I think for most people, there are bags everywhere. Companies give them out for free. You can go to a thrift store and get one for 50 cents. So use that endlessly. Um, I recently posted on our Instagram that a plastic bag is actually, I think the average usage time of it is 12 minutes, but it's here for a thousand years. And so that is just... Yeah, (laughs) that really is something else right there. Um, So we have French string bags in our store that like stretch out with your groceries. And they're actually the same size as a a regular like plastic grocery bag. They have little handles. Um, So we have a lot of people switch to those. And then also plastic wraps is a big one. Um, And we have quite a few different products in our store to replace plastic wrap. And I think it's a hard swap for some people because it's so, you know, it's something we're just used to, uh, you know, my whole life. I, you, you go somewhere and you wrap everything in plastic. It's just what you do. And so um, there are a lot of different alternatives depending on where you are in your like sustainability journey or just what you're able to do. And so we have like rolls of beeswax that you can cut like plastic wrap, which is super cool. Um, and then we also have like cloth covers and beeswax and um, silicone bowl covers and things like that. So um, that's a really, I think, easy swap for people to make because you have options. It's not just like, no, you have to use a metal straw. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> you, can, you don't have to, you know, if you like your straw, just, you know, I mean, that's a cool thing to switch. But like, you know, there's some other things to get you started. Um, yeah, I think those are probably my my top two, the plastic wrap and the plastic bags. Yeah, you know, I'm feeling convicted already. And as you were talking, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even want to show her my plastic wrap in my drawer upstairs in the kitchen. And now I feel like I need a priest so I can confess about my (laughs) plastic wrap. Well, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm telling you, the Costco roll of plastic wrap, I mean, I I was like, when is this going to end? I think I had that thing for like two or three years. And I, was like, I know about plastic at this rate. It just, it's endless. It just like kept coming. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't even really given that a thought, but you, I, and also I was surprised by the thousand years. Yeah. Be, that seems, yeah, that's very surprising. There's um, I'm sure you probably know about this and I'm probably calling it the wrong thing, but there is like this great garbage patch in the ocean yeah. that, uh, yeah, that's like the size of Texas or something crazy yeah, like that. This is a garbage patch. Yeah. yeah. What is it called? 
the, I think it's just called the Pacific Garbage Patch. <laughs> yeah, Pacific Garbage, garbage Patch. And that that is the single-use plastics, like water bottles. Yeah, and, and, the, and the really sad thing about that is that it's already in the ocean. So the water, the salt water is breaking it down. And so basically, like, underneath all of that, there's just tinier and tinier and tinier pieces of plastic. And that's where, like, wildlife get harmed and, and things like that. Because there's we can't go, like, scooping up the sand in the bottom of the ocean and filtering out our plastics. We have to stop. We have to start, you know, from above water. So, yeah, in the soil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, uh, again, I love what you guys are doing. Your original shop before it was Grateful Goods was called tear shop but you all recently rebranded obviously what inspired you all to rebrand so the name tear um i felt like kind of limited us i think we both felt like that it 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 means to to zero something out on the scale so it's a fantastic name for just a refillery but faith and i wanted to bring in you know home decor and things we love and we also wanted a name for us because the i you know faith came on board a month later so this was kind of it's it's our baby <laughs> basically <laughs> so um so yeah we we um we just wanted something that kind of represented us and also just uh, us expanding so now we've got all the goods the great we're grateful you are grateful. Yeah, grateful. It's it it's uh interesting. You have a period after the word great and then mm-hmm. full goods. Mm-hmm. Is it right? Yeah. Yes. Then why did you put a period after the word great? Tell me about it. Because then that. the word grateful is kind of together. <laughs> ah, there we go. We're grateful, yeah. But like, yeah, it's just a, a good branding thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's different and unique. It, yeah. as is your space and it is also a very charming space where you welcome laughers to bring their own containers and start a conversation about investing in the small changes to their habits that can have that big effect on future generations. Uh, can you share with us a bit more about what a conversation like that would look like in your shop and what kinds of big effects they can have with those tiny changes? So I love having conversations with people that come in for the first time. We are very, I think we are very welcoming and we have a lot of experience doing this. So we always, of course, warn everybody, you know, don't worry about spills. We're a refill shop. We got lots of rags, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> So that's okay. Some things might squirt, but it's, it's all right. Um, and so we, uh, we, I mean, I think one of the really cool things is the JMU students coming too, cause the bus stop, the bus stop is across the street from Agora. So they'll come in, you know, after they've done some things downtown, they'll come into Agora and they'll go, but I don't have to go to Target or Walmart tonight. And I'm like, no, you don't. You can just fill up on this soap. <laughs> You're like, I need conditioner. We're like, we've got it. So we have um, a lot of like, just, you know, like, I think I use the words practical goods, like the, the things that you would use um, in everyday life for personal hygiene and cleaning and just like tools around the house. Um, we've got them. They're just not plastic and they don't come in plastic containers. Um, our refill selection too, I wanted to mention is closed loop which is really cool. It's a new thing where the company will take back the containers. So those containers are endlessly used. They're not thrown away when they're empty. So that's really exciting. <laughs> and sustainable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're a like family, they family owned business in, um, is, is I think in Minnesota. I don't know. She can't hear me right now. Maybe Missouri, <laughs> um, but they're family. Somewhere business. over there. <laughs> yeah. They're really sweet people to work with. We love it. Yeah. So we're really glad that we can offer that to Harrisonburg, something closed loop, like, you know, it just helps our landfill too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's a, so they can be a part. That's a way that they can be a part of a big effect is mm-hmm. in even our own communities. Uh, landfill. So we do. Yeah, we keep track of how many people refill. And right now we're, I think, at around 1,300 bottles since August, since we opened. And that um, includes toothpaste. Like instead of buying toothpaste in a plastic tube, we have little tabs. So you would bite them and put water on your toothbrush and you start brushing and they foam right up. So instead of a plastic tube of toothpaste, that's a little, just a little thing you could, you know, swap out. Um I think there's so many. (laughs) Yes, you do have a lot of options and a lot of different things in the shop. And listen, Mm -hmm. Melissa, I haven't (laughs) really used loose herbs or even Epsom salt 
<laughs> myself for personal care. So I don't even know what I'm doing with these things. Can you describe some typical uses and other ways the laughers can utilize your loose herbs and Epsom salt? Like how? Well, what's the first rule is you don't eat the Epsom salt. Okay. <laughs> the, <first laughs> thing. the second thing is you'll want to turn on a fan and then you sprinkle the herbs in front of you and you let them hit your body. For real? I'm, no. Uh, I was like, <laughs> no. see how naive I am, Laffer. I, like, I totally imagined that too. And I thought, I, I, I don't want to do that. That's so nice. <laughs> um, no, you, we use little, um, little bags that you yeah. put the loose herbs and the Epsom salt in bath. They're tea bags for the bath. Oh. And so you fill those with whatever you'd like and then put it, put it in your bathtub and let it steep. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Like roses are very moisturizing. Eucalyptus is good for um, congestion and things like that. So each one, each item that we have does serve some sort of purpose. Oh, and that's a good one right now because people are yeah. getting um, <laughs> yeah. congestion right now. So that would be a, a useful thing for them. Yeah. I like, I'm going to have to listen now. I'm going to have to come down and get some of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do love your shop. I was in there and I saw these lovely home decor items. I, you know, I'm going to let you tell the laughers what you have in the store now because you're going to do a better job than I can. Tell them about all these cute things. <laughs> so we actually rotate um, depending on the vendors and, and whatnot. We do some consignment as well so that we support local artisans. Um, so right now we have like some really nice um, hand stamped or dyed um, bandanas by a local girl, Lish and Ed, it's her company name, but um, she actually has flowers that she stamps onto clothing and different things. So it's, it's beautiful work. So we have some of that in here. Um, we also have some macrame items made by a woman, um, in Virginia and she has like water bottle holders, which I never knew were a thing, but when you're hiking, so you don't have to grab your water bottle out, you just have this little like water bottle sling. It's kind of cool. Oh. Um, and then we have some artwork from Faith's company. Faith, um, it runs a company called Wilderness Woodprints with her husband and he's a photographer. So he takes photos around the Valley and they get them printed on birch wood and they look what? so pretty. Yeah. You like put them in a frame. They're they're gorgeous. They're like really thin pieces of wood with a beautiful picture on them. Um, so those have actually made a really great lightweight gift for people to send overseas or across the country. You know, it has a picture of something in the Shenandoah Valley. It's this beautiful piece of wood. Um, so that's a super nice gift. Um, and then we have some postcards and posters from Bread and Puppet Theater in Vermont. I'm not sure if you're if you ever heard oh. of them. Oh. So I might, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know like the full, full story, but I'll tell you my understanding <laughs> here. Okay. I'm that, listening. Okay. Back in the seventies, um, this organization or group of people were traveling the U S on a bus and they would take like random pieces of trash and things that they found and they would like make it into art. It was called cheap art. And they actually have a cheap, the thing they call the cheap art manifesto with which describes this more. Basically they sold art for 10 cents to $10 and funded their theater and their like projects and everything that way. Just like travel around. And we actually have a couple in Harrisonburg that has one of their posters from way back in the seventies in their apartment window. Oh so gosh. randomly. Yeah. And faith is from Vermont. So that's kind of how we like got connected with them. But this couple had come in and they were like, yeah, we used to march with them. Like they did climate <laughs> activist stuff. And like, they were the coolest couple. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cool that we have this in our, in our shop. So, and some of them have like little quotes, like Emily Dickinson quotes and stuff on them, but they're just the cutest little pictures of just hand stamped, like really cute. So yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's really good. I think the, I like all those things. I think the last time I was in there, you were, you had the Harrisonburg pillows, right? I'm not, am I? In oh, that's right next door. Gilded. Oh yeah. Yeah. Those right are good. Door. Okay. Yeah. yeah they have mind. um the Harrisonburg pillows and they have really cute shirts that say Harrisonburg honey. <laughs> it's a yellow t-shirt. I have one. <laughs> Maybe you saw me wearing it here. I don't know. <laughs> I might have. I might have. Yeah, there's a lot of cool shops in there, including yeah. yours. You have bulk items too. The laughers 
can bring their own container, purchase a standard, regular, or wide mouth mason jar in store, or borrow a container from your jar library. Mm -hmm. I have never heard of a jar library. So I was wondering if you could share with us what in the heck that is <laughs> and, and what we should know about bulk shopping items in your shop. Yeah. So, um, the jar library, the funny, <laughs> it's funny thing about that. I hadn't heard of any sort of thing like that till a couple of years ago when I was working at bring your own, which is the store that used to be in our space in Agora market. It was a bulk store. And so I used to volunteer and work for Allie and she is absolutely wonderful. And so she's actually my first experience with, cause I, I knew that I wanted to do this, but I was like, nobody does it. There must be a reason, <laughs> you know, there, there must be a reason you can't go get laundry detergent or dish detergent. And it turns out that, um, it's just not very mainstream here. It is in the UK, in Canada, um, there, every little town, not every little town, but like most little towns, that's what they have is like a little shop you can go to and refill your soap, your dish soap, your laundry detergent. And so you don't have to go, you know, far into town to like a big box store. You just have like this little refill kiosk that you keep refilling at, which is just like super cool. And I can't, I, that would be a dream. Like if we could do that around here. <laughs> um, but yeah. So Allie um, of bring your own, she pulled out her jar library one day and I went, they have to bring them back. Like they take a jar and then they bring it back, but it's not quite like that. It's called a jar library, but you can take anything that you need from it. The hope is that you would bring something back eventually, like whether it be that jar or maybe you finish your, um, I want to pull it close, but I'm not going to, um, <laughs> like, you know, like, uh, your soap pumps, like hand soap with a pump on top. If you finish that, it's, it's just going to go to the landfill, especially if it's not clean. And if it's not a number one plastic, the number one plastics are the ones that get recycled the most. So you're, you know, let's say you're stuck with this number four <laughs> pump. You're going to throw it away. We'll take it as long as it's cleaned and sanitized and the labels off. <laughs> we'll take it and then we'll put it in the jar library. And that's when we see a lot of the students, you know, when they come on the bus and they're like, wait a minute, all the things I need are here. Well, here is also a pump. So now you've purchased, you know, the product by the ounce with a free container. And it was way less than it would have been if you went to a big box store. So everything's priced. Yeah. By the ounce and the jar library is just a place that, you know, if you forget your jar, or you need something, we've got it. Um, but we also sell Mason jars and most of our customers bring their own. Honestly, they, they, they know the drill. Um, they were going to bring your own before they came here. So we're very fortunate that have lots of regulars that can teach us to. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They already know the drill. Yeah. You have Mason jar accessories. I don't know much about Mason jar accessories. Can you give some examples of Yeah. It's more like I mean, I think it's more of the like farmhouse style look. Like a lot the minimalist look which, which is a really popular right now too, just like simplifying things. You don't need a, a lot of people don't like a ton of color or, you know, like all the plastic and whatnot. So, we have pump tops that fit on the mason jar so you can make it kind of your own style. There's like copper and silver and chrome and um, matte black. So, you know, if your bathroom already has a theme, we have a couple different options to turn mason jars into your soap dispenser. Soap yeah. dispenser, like even hand soap on the counter of the bathroom? Yeah, I have foaming soap dispensers. We have them in the shop. I have them in all my bathrooms at home and it, it works perfectly and uses a lot less soap and you fill it with your own water. That's a big thing that we're, um, that we're learning a lot about is the carbon footprint of water itself, which is really because we all have water in our homes. Why well, are we she shipping it? Right. Yeah. Like, I never even thought about it. <laughs> so um, we have some companies that have come to us that make powdered products or like pressed, um, for example, toilet bombs. Instead of buying a plastic container of toilet clean, toilet bowl cleaner, we have these little, um, they're just little like, uh, kind of like a bath bomb, but for your wow. toilet. toilet bomb. So you throw it in there, it fizzles up a little bit and you start washing and, you know, you don't have a plastic container in the end. And yeah, so... The water, water doesn't need to be shipped everywhere all the time. Is what wow. I've <laughs> the car, I didn't even, you know what? It didn't occur to me to think of a water carbon imprint, <laughs> to be yeah. honest with you. <laughs> so, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, there's a lot of different ways just in uh, choosing some of these sustainable products that keep the the plastic out of landfills. Oh, I'm learning. And, I'm learning every day something new. Let me tell you, <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. What is the main way that you learn about? sustainability that you have found very useful to you or can you share some resources that maybe if there are laughers out there like hey wait a minute this has really inspired me to take a look at some things can you share a couple of useful resources with us yeah i um i actually myself started by watching netflix documentaries i was okay. on maternity leave yeah 11 years ago or 12 years ago um so on maternity leave with my daughter my second child and i started going down a hole of <laughs> like what's in our soil what's in our food why are we wrapping bananas in plastic like all these things and i was like i have to do something <laughs> so that's kind of where you know it stemmed it was just like what can i do like i wasn't trying to you know change anybody else's ways or life and i i still think that we're we're always just trying to give like everyone a an option you know like i was saying earlier you're like there's different products for your wherever you are on your journey it's not like no, you don't want plastic wrap. You can only have this. That's it. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, you, you have choices um, now, whereas it wasn't like that before. So definitely like um, just videos on our environment. Um, social media is a big one. That's where I learn a lot of things now that I also have to cross-reference, obviously. Right. Um, <laughs> don't just read a meme and think, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's the <laughs> truth. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe <Yeah>. not. <laughs> but um, but th we have so many great refill stores in the U.S. now, and we're all trying to share the information that we find out when we find, when we, you know, learn something. Um, I mentioned the quote or the, um, uh, plastic bag. Uh, uh, what, what did I say? It was like the uh, 12, 12 minutes that it has its lifetime is a 12 minutes, but then it's here on the planet for a thousand years. So I got those facts from a website by um, Georgetown University Students for Sustainability. So that would be a really good um, thing to look up because they had a list of 50 things that the students learned that they thought were the most important facts about sustainability. Um, and that was on Georgetown University's website. So that was probably, that's where I would start for anybody that's interested right now. Just read those 50 things the students have to, you know, or not have to, but that they, they came up with themselves and then just start checking, maybe checking them off. Like, what can I, can I change this? Can I, you know, gotta start yeah. somewhere. <laughs> yeah, daily too. I you know, you know, speaking of that, people go to work and eat, bring their lunch and they go to school and bring their lunch. I believe you have metal straws and like reusable yep, yep. like metal containers, straws, right? Silicone straws, metal containers. Um yeah, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to look right now just to let everybody know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> but uh, we also have utensils and utensil holders. So we have the utensil holders where you can actually just pack stuff from your home. Like you just take out your fork, your knife, your spoon, put it in this roll. You roll it up, tie it up. It's made by a local woman. Um, and then we also have sets that have wooden tools already in them. So you just would like wash it every day and throw it back in your purse. I have one in my glove box and that's how I, I refuse, you know, single use plastic when I eat at to go places. Cause we don't always have the option to refill a container. I don't know if you have ever heard of or seen anyone going into a restaurant with their jar in their purse. Or <laughs> Not yet, but you know, anything's possible. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when I see you, I'll be on the lookout. <laughs> yeah. The first time I ever did it was in 2009. And uh, yeah, and that was, so that was way f before this journey. But I remember bringing this place that I, this restaurant that I loved always had styrofoam. And so I was like, I'm just going to bring a jar and put my to-go food in it. And I remember my husband being like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to bring a mason jar to this restaurant. And so I put it in my purse and I went to the restaurant and I didn't finish all my food and I put it in the jar and it, it did feel weird. <laughs> it felt like everyone was looking at me, but then, you know, like the feel, the good feeling later, like came, I was like, ah, oh, no styrofoam in my trash bag tonight. You know, just that one little thing. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't every, take much for me. To get <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, but also good. I mean, every little bit helps and together we can achieve much more. So I, <laughs> does, I guess it doesn't feel weird now pulling out your mason jar after. Well, now we have cute containers. <laughs> so oh, okay. It looks a little better. Yeah. <laughs> 
So these cute containers are like to go containers that people to go per- containers made of metal yeah or stainless steel um and i mean you could still we have jar connectors in the shop um too so you can actually turn your mason jar into like a, a bento box so oh. um, <laughs> yeah, which looks really funny in an employee uh refrigerator when i when i work at the school i got my big old <laughs> mason jar stuck together They're like did you see that thing in the fridge whose is that I'm like oh <laughs> Uh, I have a lifestyle store on the side. <laughs> you know what's good about that is they don't know what it is, so they probably aren't going to eat it. <laughs> yeah. And so your lunch is I'm safe. bringing it. <laughs> but that's good to use. That, that's I like that. You so I have some kind of sets available. People can or pack it or. Uh, holders for utensils and things like that. It makes me mm-hmm. think of. Do you have any kind of gift sets available to people? Yeah, so we've um, we've had a couple gift sets roll out on the 21st of every month, like the fall equinox, the winter solstice box. Um, nice. We've done that, but Faith and I are working on some more just everyday lifestyle boxes. And one we're doing right now is, uh, or we're working on is a um, self-care box. So it would be just, you know, some items that make you feel good that um, are comforting, you know, some bath salts or, or some candles and things like, you know, just take that, you know, two, three hours or if you can, <laughs> if you don't have children, <laughs> to yourself, you know, once a week. <laughs> Tell the husband um, to yeah. take the kids out for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we are we are working on the gift sets. We'll probably put them, you know, up on our website as they come along because it's ju- it's just the two of us. We're, you know, two two working moms. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are really good. And you have gift cards too available. If we do, yeah, and we have a um, button on our first page of our website. On the top, there is a button to um, purchase gift cards. Now, gift cards with us aren't plastic. Um, they get emailed to you uh so you'll have a code and then you can shop online or in the store with that code do you that's really great do you um sit in a store and see those plastic gift card racks and cringe (laughs) then like what's your your, what's your reaction to this you know actually the thing the only (laughs) thing i've ever cringed at like real hard uh, two things. Okay. One two things. is one one is metal straws wrapped in a plastic container. Okay. Yep. I can see it. <laughs> yeah. And the second, what are we doing? I got you. <laughs> yeah. The second thing is when I hadn't been in a big box store like Walmart or Target, I hadn't been in one for like a year and a half. At one point, I was like, I'm gonna really try this. You know, I don't need anything from there. And I walked. I walked in, and I went to the shampoo aisle, and I was like why do we need four of the same shampoo and then four of the next same shampoo? It was so much. <laughs> and I remember yeah. just being like, and, and that's what the, the plastic was calculating in my head then. But besides that, I don't get, you know, I mean, I think we all can do the best we can, but when it really comes down to it, it's the people that are producing these things. So like, if you have a favorite shampoo that's coming in plastic, like, and your, you know, your hair needs it. Like, why would you, I guess, not buy that? Or you can't do anything about it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like, you're, that's what you need. So you get it in plastic until the producers make things in aluminum or glass. There's nothing. We, right. we can just do our little part. <laughs> that's it. We can do little things. I, I yeah. like that. Yeah. Speaking of, of doing little things, you're, this isn't little. I think it's great. You're giving back to the community already. I saw that you did a refills for refugees donation this past Christmas. What was that all about? So refills from ref uh, for refugees was actually um, not a donation from us. It was from our customers. It was direct donations from people to us, and we facilitated the um coordination with uh, village to village in harrisonburg they help resettle refugees from all over the world but um as we saw what was going on in afghanistan and just you know like harrisonburg is just such a welcoming it really is the friendly city like it, there's no <laughs> other way to describe uh, the city <laughs> yes so, correct so we just you know we thought we'll put this jar out 
and we'll tell people about it if they want to round up their change. And so we collected a hundred bucks and we filled up jars of laundry detergent village to village came, they picked them up and yeah, it was awesome. It was, it was a really, really great thing for us to start out with. Um, and then the following month we did a fundraiser for any given child, um, so I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, but they yes. um, support, yeah, equity in arts education for K through 12 children in our area. So um, I was a sign language interpreter for the lip sync battle event. Nice. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And so I was we one also of the early to... ones of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you yeah. are? I was oh. in the early ones. Yeah. I, I would love that. to. I think it would be so fun. <laughs> I just love getting out there on stage. I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, you were on the stage with uh, the I was with one of the acts, uh Priscilla. Oh okay. you know, Priscilla May Man. No? Yeah, she she did um she actually did Hamilton, which was so fun to sign. I oh. loved it. But um but yeah, I donated my time as a sign language interpreter just to her act. It would have been crazy for me to do all of those. I was so tired afterwards. <laughs> but um but yeah, we we uh, we did the lip sync battle, and uh, Faith and I supported uh, Priscilla and any given child in the end. But uh, we did some f- fundraising for them too. Yeah. Oh, so whatever. Okay. I mean, we're open to you know any organizations that want to do, you know, that need need some help. We're here. Um, I'm happy to market things. <laughs> yeah, I I think that's great. I'm 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 envisioning you on stage and turning <laughs> and dancing and moving. I wish I would have seen that. That would have been beautiful. Maybe uh, next year. <laughs> yeah, maybe next year. Maybe I, I'm definitely need to check it out again. I was just uh, I was just recording with J.R. Snow from Any Given Child earlier Ooh. today because he's you know we awesome. wanted. Yeah, we did a podcast episode on the youth fine arts around here and specifically also the uh, Court Square Cafe. So that's going to be an upcoming episode. So now you got me all inspired. As soon as the date comes out, I'm just going to have to put it on my calendar. Yeah, that no, was <laughs> really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. You also have a pop up. You do a pop up shop. You can set those up for events. Can you tell us more about what that? looks like and what kind of events are ideal for your pop-up shop? Yeah. So, um, we, we have a lot of artisan made items in our shop and some farmers markets are limited to only like things made locally. So, um, the ideal pop-up place for us would be somewhere that welcomes local artisans and really just like art, just small business owners around the U S that's where we primarily source. Um, I think I mentioned the company earlier, Missouri. (laughs) So, so, you know, I'm sure of that, but (laughs) yeah. And so we did, (laughs) we did, uh, we popped up at the Timberville Christmas village. That was really fun in Timberville at Showalter's orchard. Um, and so we were there through the holidays and that was nice to sip cider and see that beautiful view. (laughs) <laughs> yes, that's a gorgeous place, by the way, you all. I hope to get them on the podcast sometime because that's, oh. that's a definite, that's a yeah. definite bu- valley bucket list for sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then we were the general store at Red Wing Roots last year. And, oh, cool. Uh, yeah. And so we are, we are planning to be back this year. And the fun thing with uh, Red Wing is that as a general store, there are some items that, that have to be plastic. I mean, I can't find Advil and antacids <laughs> in a compostable <laughs> package right now. Um, so, you know, you'll see some items that are, you know, they might not be fully sustainable, but they're definitely necessities <laughs> for a festival. Um, yes. and we did some like led lights and it was really fun. It was the first time I think I've been to Red Wing, like, you know, seven years now. And so it was my, the first time I was looking around, I could see people with like our glowy things on them. And I was like, Oh, that's so great. <laughs> <laughs> so we had like led lights and solar powered lanterns we had and, um, uh, the flashlights that crank instead of using batteries. So, um, so yeah, we can, we can kind of make a, make a, pop-up work anywhere <laughs> I think <laughs> I think so too I, I love that idea I love seeing little pop-up shops and anybody's doing them I like to hear about it because it just it's a neat thing it can you know kind of shop off site yeah yeah it brings your business to a whole other like some people that don't have transportation all the way to Harrisonburg but they you know might be close to some you know wherever the pop-up is they experience you know your a little mini version of your shop and it might inspire them to want to go see more. I, I love it. I love traveling around and doing that. 
Yeah, it's great I think fun. it's a great idea. This mm-hmm. has been so fun. As we wrap up here, can you share with the laughers how they can follow Grateful Goods on social media or otherwise to get more information? Yeah, so you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Our um, tat or handle is uh, great dot full goods and great is spelled G R E A T because we are wonderful. <laughs> they are wonderful. <laughs> and then full like a full container. Get it? Great. Uh, um, so uh, great dot full goods. Um, and then of course our website is shopgrateful.com. Great. Laughers, we will be sure to put that information in the show notes for you as well. Thank you so much, Melissa. This has been great and such a joy being with you today to have you share with us all about your wonderful, sustainable shop that you and Faith have. Thank you so, so much. Really appreciate it. And thank you. This was so much fun. Yes, definitely. I'm going to have to come (laughs) down there and say hi to you. Please do. (laughs) I will. Laughers, get, you can get more information about their store online at shopgrateful.com. That's shopgrateful.com. Buy a gift card for any occasion, whether they're gift sets, or you can stop by in person and visit them at Agora Market in downtown Harrisonburg. Agora Market has more than half a dozen small businesses offering a wide variety of high-quality goods, including handmade and fair trade items, zero waste products, vintage finds, clothing, and more. We'll also be sure to put their website and information in the show notes for you too. And lastly, and most importantly, thanks for tuning in, Laughers. Out of all the podcasts out there, you picked us, and we think that's pretty darn special, just like you. Until next time, keep smiling. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Virginia is for Laughers podcast, brought to you by X2 Comedy. We'll be dropping a new podcast every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so check back for another uplifting episode. Come to an X2 Comedy show or let us bring a show to you. To find out more, head to x2comedy.com. Be sure to share us with a friend. Until next time, cheers.